little bit of a different day, a tough day, strange day. Um, but uh, this morning I was notified uh, by Coach Enos that um, he was resigning from his position as the head football coach here to take a job at the University of Arkansas as their offensive coordinator. Um, we accepted that resignation and uh, are starting to move forward. I want to thank Dan for everything he's done. Uh, this program uh, is, in, is in a good place. Um, there are many pieces of this foundation that have been built now through Dan and through his staff, and I want to thank him for that. Um, now it's time to move forward. It's time to find the next leader for this program that can build on that and take us to a championship level that can be consistently a winner here that has a great deal of passion about our program. Um, I want to be clear that uh, you know we had had some conversations with Dan. Um, he was under contract here to be our head football coach. We had had conversations about extending his agreement with us. Um, we had made an appropriate offer to Dan, um, supported by our board of trustees and by the president of the university and myself. Um, Dan made a decision based on the opportunity he had at Arkansas. Um, and again, we wish him well and, and hope that he's very, very successful in that venture. Um, you know, I'm not at liberties to discuss specifics of negotiations uh, or personnel matters. I'll, I'll talk in generalities uh, the best I can to, to keep you informed and to give you as much information as I, as I really can, but, uh, um, but I, won't, I won't talk about details. Uh, timeline of our search is, uh, is going to be swift. It's going to be appropriate. Um, we're going to find an outstanding football coach. That's the most important thing, and the timeline for that will follow. Um, very cognizant of the fact that this is an unusual time, that we have a lot on the line, that we have a, a recruiting class, a number of verbal commits who we are fully committed to, uh, of honoring those commitments and look forward to them being Chippewas. Uh, but that all plays into this as well, that uh, signing day is coming up and, uh, and we look forward to signing every one of those young men who have committed to come here. And they will have an outstanding experience in our football program. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll open it up and, uh, and try to answer as many questions as I can. So shoot away. You know, I'd, uh, um, I don't know in this business anymore if I'm ever shocked. Um, certainly wasn't the way I thought I'd start my day today. Um, Dan and I had had some conversations. Uh, I was aware of uh, the opportunity that was out there. But again, uh, Coach Enos was under contract with us, and my intention was him to be our football coach going forward here. Did he talk to you specifically about the shot in Arkansas? He did. Any, what specific attributes, anything that you're looking for in the next head coach? Um, you know, we want um, someone who's passionate about our football program. We want an outstanding recruiter. We want um, someone who can develop. I think, again, recruiting and developing players is very, very important. Um, we want someone who, uh, who has a vision that will, again, continue the tradition, the passion that there is for football in, 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 at Central Michigan University. So I think those are the, the key components that, that you need. Um, but you know, you need the right fit. You need the right fit, the person who can come here that embraces what we have at Central Michigan, um, that is student athlete centered, that will continue recruiting high caliber, high character student athletes, um, but again, has a great deal of demand um, and wants to be highly successful. Uh, so again, in broad strokes, those, those are the things that are important to me. Do you have a time frame for this hire? You know, I don't, Jim. Again, we'll we'll move swiftly. Um, again, where where we are in this time frame, it's important that we move quickly. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll enlist the the help of a search firm to uh, to help coordinate this. Um, that will be the best method to to go forward. And uh, again, we'll we'll move very quickly. We need to find the appropriate coach, and our timeline will follow that. But, uh, but again, we know that we have to move swiftly. Before this morning, when was the last time you talked to Coach uh, I've talked to Dan. Uh, I, I talk to Dan every day. Okay. I talk to him every day, every day, since he's been a football coach here, I'd say. Did you, did you recall at all at any point a specific conversation about goals or expectations for this coming fall? Uh, Dan and I talk uh, at length um, regularly about the future of our football program. So we talk about those things. Do you recall a specific conversation about this coming fall? 
Uh, we talked about this coming fall. Sure, we talk about each season. The upcoming season's coming, and um, we want to be successful. So how's that conversation going? I mean, how does it seem to you? Was it comfortable for both of you? Um, I think I have a very good relationship with Dan. I think uh, those those conversations again are appropriate for anyone that's in a um, in a role and has to perform. Um, there's expectations, and we want to be very upfront and honest about those expectations. So, uh, yeah, we're we're always talking about how we're going forward, how we're moving the program forward, how we're going to be successful. Talk about that relationship that you have with Dan. Does this decision this morning hurt that relationship at all? Um, been in this business a long time, um, and. Uh, um, I'm passionate about this university. I feel good about where our football program is. Um, I'm committed to our student athletes and this program. Um, that's what I do every day. And uh, so, you know, I'm, uh, I know that we'll find a new football coach that will have that same passion and that same commitment to our student athletes. Do you hope to have the same type of offense and defense that you know is ran, or are you looking to maybe do, go a different direction? Uh, you know, um, I, I, I think that's really a in my mind, a secondary uh, piece to the puzzle when you look at coaches. Um, I want leadership, excellence, passion, focus on, on being great. Um, you know, offensive and defensive schemes are important. Let me be very clear, they're very important. Um, and you have to be cognizant of what types of players you have and play to their strengths. But I think offensive and defensive schemes and formations and styles are far overrated um, by the public and by the media. With the raise like PJ Fleck out of West Michigan, does that kind of hurt the landscape of finding a new coach negotiations or anything like that? No, we'll be very competitive with our offer. You spoke of national signing week coming up. How do you think this is going to affect that? And have you spoken to any of the recruits? Yeah, you know, our, our staff is still fully intact. All of our assistant coaches are under contract. Um, I've met with them. We are in contact with our recruits. Um, it's been received well. Uh, those young men want to come here because it's Central Michigan University. Uh, we're fully committed to them. Um, certainly, who the head coach is is important, and, and we recognize that fact. But we're going to have an outstanding head football coach, and that's the message that we've provided to those recruits, and we will continue to provide that to them. They've committed to our program. They committed to Central Michigan University, and, um, and we're excited to have them here. Uh, because this program is very healthy, it's in an excellent position to take off and be championship caliber. Staff, can you talk about the staff? Everyone, the status of that? Yeah, all of our coaches are under contract um, and, uh, and are here working right now. So all of our assistant coaches are here. How about the players, when were they notified? Uh, Dan talked to his players and coaches um, about 10.30 this morning. I met with the coaches today about noontime. And, uh, and I'll have an opportunity to meet the players um, individually, oh, well, as a group, later today. Obviously not in the season, but is there any sort of interim coach or someone running the operations and program that Dan would normally be doing right now? Right now, all of our coaches um, are fulfilling their roles and continue to run the program together. Um, the program now is under my direct oversight. Um, in the short period, we have a team of administrators who are involved uh, for support of the student athletes and for assistance to our coaches. Uh, but all those coaches are out. All those coaches are expected to be recruiting and connecting with our um, with our recruits. Realize that you haven't had a lot of time to process this yet. Without getting into specifics, do you maybe have like a mental list in your head of coaches you want to pursue? I think you always need to um, have an idea about potential candidates, um, and, and I have that idea. Um, though there are some some good people out there, but it need, again, it, it needs to be the right fit. It needs to be the right, they need to fit the right. There are a lot of excellent football coaches out there, but it's got to be the right fit for our university and for our program and for this time. Those are all pieces that have to be put into the mix. Um, um, short lists in in the top drawer are, are, are for a purpose. It keeps you centered on some things, but uh, I don't have a checklist that says when one person leaves, this is the next person. What about contractually? What does this mean? Uh, he's under contract for what, December 30th? Yeah, Dan, Dan uh, resigned effective today, so he, today was his last day. He's, he's no longer an employee here, and he, his pay and uh, otherwise ended today. Have you reached out to any of those potential candidates on that short list? Haven't talked to one person about this job. Have not. Would you say the next coach would be in a lot better position than maybe when Dan took over, considering that the cover's not nearly as bare as maybe it was then? I'd say this program's in excellent shape. Uh, we have we have very talented players, incredibly high character players. 
Um, it was a challenging situation for Dan to come in after a remarkable run, um, but let's not forget uh, a, a huge part of that roster left after our 12-2 and two season, uh, and that left a tremendous void. And uh, um, that, that was a big rebuilding effort. Um, no discredit uh, to anyone who had been here previously because they did an outstanding job. But the next, at that point, the next um, chapter of our program was building the program with a foundation so that it could move on and be successful on a more long-term and a consistent manner. And so that was the focus at that time and, and the emphasis on recruiting. So yes, I think now we have, a, we have an excellent foundation. So we have, a, we have an outstanding opportunity for someone. Uh, to come in with high quality players and a program that's in excellent health and shape uh, to move forward. So I can imagine the rumor mill is swirling about the CBS next football coach, but maybe you can clear the air for us a little bit. Um, is former University, University of Michigan coach Brady Hoke on that shortlist? You know, I'm not going to comment on rumors or speculation or, um, you know, Twitter or any of that stuff. I think, again, I think that's totally inappropriate. I think that only feeds the frenzy of um, inconsistency and um, inappropriate um, speculation around searches that are very sensitive issues. And um, I have not talked to anyone about the job. Um, I've made a commitment today to be focused on this program and the coaches that are here. We have families involved. Um, we have young men involved. Um, so this is, a very, this is a very important thing. And uh, it's easy for people, I think, to, to move on to the next thing. But number one, we have 100 young men who came to this university to play football and get an outstanding experience. Number two, we have a staff of assistant coaches who we're committed to. And you know what? They came here and they believed in this program. So those are very sensitive things. And, and it's my job today to make sure that those things are in order and that we have the right resources for all of those people. You know, starting very rapidly, we'll move into that next chapter. And that that's about searching for the candidate and making sure we find the right candidate. So uh, uh, some people may question that, but um, you got to be true to a couple things in this business. And that's one of them, is the people. I'm true to the people that are here on this campus. Did he, talk, did he come in and talk to you, or was this on the phone or text? or how did uh, Dan and I talked on the phone. That's how. Um, what time? Um, it, 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 Jim, it was before eight o'clock. It was uh, it was uh, it was relatively early. You know, I was not, I was at home. I wasn't in the office yet, so it was prior to prior to eight. You know, seven thirty ish. I'd say probably. Um, so, yeah. Sandy has lost a few coaches to uh, some state like, you know, Vader programs. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Kelly, Coach Jones. Um, how does that play into the uh, coaching search, knowing that there are out there that could possibly take your coaches away from you as they get Well, um, I don't get too caught up in, in, again, speculating or hypothesizing on what could happen. I, I want to make sure that we focus in on a coach that can, that can be here and, and help elevate our programs. Um, all of the coaches that have been here have, have left their mark and improved our program. Um, when people leave for, for opportunities, uh, significant opportunities like that, I think it's a compliment to what we're doing here. Um, so it does provide intrigue for candidates, I'm sure, that this job is a good job to be successful at that can lead toward uh, future goals. But let me step back from that and say, I want someone who's passionate and wants to be here. That when they're here in this job, they work 100% for this university and for this job and to make this program better. I've always said, if you just focus on what you're doing every day, you know, good things will happen to you wherever that is and whatever that may be. So, you know, so that's my focus. Uh, I, I want someone with that kind of character and that kind of passion. There's a lot of people that would like this job. There's a lot of people. They know what this place is about. It's good leadership. And there's good players here. You say you don't have, don't have a specific timeline, but do you want to have a coach to play before signing day? Um, I certainly think that uh, that, that would be um, appropriate. Dan, but uh, again, I'm, um, we would weigh every piece of that decision process of what it takes to get the right coach here. And, and we'll weigh signing day with recruiting, with finding the right coach, and with those attributes that those, that coach brings 
um, we, we bring it all together and make the best decision we can make and try to fit that into a timeline that, that helps us in, a, in the best way possible. When you talk to the players this afternoon, are you going to seek any of their input into what they would uh, hope or, or want to see in their next coach? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm always interested in what our student athletes think uh, and, and how they feel um, and, and what they think is most important. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a different time for us. These uh, student athletes, unlike our previous coaching changes, have, have never had another coach. There's only been one man that stood in front of them. They haven't been through a transition. Um, I like to say this is a learning experience. You know, all of us in this room know how things change quickly in life, and you're faced with challenges every day. Um, and this is a learning experience for those young people. In their collegiate, in their college time, they get to see some adversity. Uh, they get a taste of what real life's about. And then it's a challenge for all of us to move forward and to take advantage of that. So, but I'm, I'm definitely interested in their opinions and, and what they think is the right um, mix and the right characteristics and what they think a good coach would be. And we'll talk about that together. Thank you. We've listened to your talks for so long about student athletes and the student athletes centered here. Um, you talked a little bit about maybe their input when it comes to choosing a new coach. But does Dan's decision this morning, in your opinion, hurt student athletes here at CU? Uh, is his decision? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think it hurts student athletes. Um, you know, we, we want to provide a great environment for them. Certainly, anytime coaches leave, there's transition, and that's difficult. But Dominic, as I as I just said, I think um, we're faced with that every day in life. This is real life. This is a situation that we have to figure out how to work through, rebound, and make better going forward, and learn from it and make better. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity. I wouldn't look at it as a negative. I'm looking at this as an opportunity for our program to get better and for us to do better things for our student athletes and for this university and for our passionate fan base. This, these people, we want to win here. We want to have a great program. We're proud of this place. And we want a coach that, that feels that same way and that can energize and, and engage with those kind of folks. So that's important to me. Um, but no, I don't think that this is, um, a scar on a student athlete. This is challenges and um, this happens in other programs as well. We're gonna make it a positive.